Okay, good morning. Um, okay, so I'm sharing the classroom code. Uh, this is your classroom code for ML. So join this classroom right now. And also, mark your attendance in the form. Okay. Uh, okay, I hope that everyone has joined the meeting uh, and uh, now we shall proceed with the lab assignment with the machine learning lab. So, so today is the introductor, introduction lab of machine learning. So I, we have already studied various things, uh, introduction in what is machine learning and everything. So today we'll be getting a brief introduction of various libraries that you'll be utilizing for implementing the machine learning algorithms in your lab manuals, right? So, <clears throat> so I think uh, you, uh, you are, uh, aware of Jupyter Notebook? Everyone is aware of Jupyter Notebook? Everyone has worked with that? Yes? Yes. Uh, so we'll be performing the implementation on Jupyter Notebook in, in machine learning labs. So today you will be getting an introduction of various uh, libraries. Uh, I'll be introducing, I'll be giving a short introduction of uh, NumPy. Uh, wait a minute, let me share the screen. Uh, my screen is visible, everyone. Yes, okay. So, in today's lab, we will be getting a brief introduction of various libraries such as NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib. Matplotlib, Scikit-Learn, and NLTK. Okay. Just a minute. Two minutes. Wait for two minutes. All right. So, uh, am I audible? <clears throat> okay. So, in today's lab, um, we'll be getting an introduction of these libraries. And then we'll proceed. So, I have already shared you some of the files where you can see that I have shared the basic implementation of these libraries. So, only a brief idea has been given to you. But I hope that you will be studying by yourself. You'll uh, do your own research and you'll find out other functions that are present in NLTK library, right? 
so now uh, sorry uh, in other libraries as well so today we, i'll be talking about these libraries what are some of the functions that are provided by the, them and then after that uh, in the last one hour you will be performing the implementation of various lab practicals that are given at the end of this particular file okay so i have provided uh, you the file so you may oh, keep it open or you may uh, see what i'm doing uh, at this point of time and then later on after we uh, finish the discussion on this libraries we can you shall you can proceed with the implementation part right okay so first library that i want to discuss today is numpy library that is a very basic library in python which is used for most of the implementation uh, you will be utilizing this library so this is mainly used for creating multi dimensional array multi dimensional array or uh, and so whenever your data set is very large for example whenever you are dealing with an image based data set for example your data is a image based data set with 28 cross 28 size that is pixels so you will be creating a multi dimensional array to store your data your data will be in the form of numerical form okay in in wherever you are storing so for that purpose you will be utilizing a um, uh, utilizing numpy arrays and many other cases for example whenever we are doing the implementation of linear regression or any other numerical uh, uh, data that we want to store we there are certain functions that i want to discuss for example in numpy library we have certain functions just uh, for example in the file in the file first you are shown some differences um, a difference between list and array right so everybody knows the difference between list and array right and uh, even wants to uh, give an insight no okay yes even us okay those who have joined late um want to uh, tell you that uh, this is your i'll i'm going to share the classroom code as well as the forms link in so that you can join it so this is your form link where you can mark attendance so you can have multiple data types in list while not so in arrays so uh, similarly some of the algebraic operations right algebraic operations that we can perform in uh, arrays but we cannot perform in list for example uh, let, uh, in the file itself you are given an example of performing an addition operation but when we perform an addition operation with the list it will perform append while in uh, if you want to perform numerical addition we can easily perform with the help of numpy arrays right is it clear so some of the okay yes right uh, good those who have answered the question uh, good effort good answer fine okay now, so some of the functions that we have in this are uh, addition we can perform wait a minute so we can perform some of the algebraic operations easily then in uh, through arrays through numpy arrays we can create matrix okay matrix is arrays of arrays and we can we can also create uh, do some of the linear algebraic functions with the help of ma on, on matrix what are the linear algebraic functions of, uh, that you can perform that know of for matrix Oh. 
yes hello what are some of the functions that you know of uh, that you can perform on matrix yes inverse of a matrix transpose of a matrix matrix multiplication etc right okay uh, so here uh, first of all you have to study the syntax okay np dot array is used to create an array, multi dimensional array in a uh, numpy then if you uh, for, sorry a single dimensional array similarly for multi dimensional also you have to pass multiple parameters inside multiple arrays multi one, multiple one dimensional array you have to pass in order to create a multi dimensional array okay fine so these are some of the functions that are present for example you want to perform transpose of matrix you have to use dot tree as i say it is a syntax uh, inverse you have uh, you want to find determinant so it is present in linear and library of uh, of numpy uh, numpy library uh, where you can perform the determinant similarly there are other uh, functions as well for example the dot product uh, you have sum if you want to perform the sum dot product is actually uh, the matrix multiplication and suppose you want to perform element wise multiplication element to element multiplication that is first element first element and so on then you just need to use the operator star similarly so you can also use at the rate operator to perform uh, the matrix multiplication okay is it clear all right yes uh, shall we proceed with the next part yes so uh, okay other than that we can also perform some statistical operation for example you want to find mean median standard deviation so there are functions for that similarly so you have norm of an array you can find norm of an array using uh, the function norm which is present in linear alg library right you know norm i suppose okay then uh, we have a certain operations for example you want to find mean by columns only columns okay mean by columns and you have to pass in parameter called axis inside it for example if you pass axis equal to 0 then it will perform mean by columns and if you pass axis value as 1 it will perform mean by rows okay these are things you can see in the file that i have shared so you get better insight in that uh, i'm just giving you a brief idea of what is present in the file uh, so after referring to the file and performing the practicals uh, i'll uh, suggest that you go through uh, the libraries by yourself and study various uh, other uh, whatever other functions are present in the library okay is it clear yes okay what is norm norm is uh, we had uh, if you remember in vector algebra we used to calculate this uh, magnitude recall do you recall this gen yes that is what we are trying to calculate here in the array as, as well okay fine uh, no normalization is different i think uh, this is actually calculating the magnitude right you have to see the formula i have shared yes 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 summation over the square root something like that that we used to calculate recall yes okay okay fine uh, then we have centering of centering of column centering Okay, we have something called centering. If you see, we in the last part, we have centering the columns of a matrix. Okay, what is centering of column of a matrix? We are trying to uh, separate the value of a mean of a particular column from the elements of the column. That is what we are performing in centering. So, uh, what are we trying to do in centering? We are trying to reduce the number, reduce the, uh, reduce the value. Right, we are trying to center the center the matrix. That is what we are trying to do. So the method is to subtract the mean of that particular column from the from the element value. Okay. So mostly center mostly uh, mo the centering of the column centering is performed only with the help of columns. It cannot be performed by rows. Okay. So what will we, what will we do if we want to perform the centering through rows? What is what what 
do you think we can we want to perform the sentence by rules of a matrix <clears throat> hello okay hello multiply with negative matrix and transpose of matrix yes that that's you can do we can find transpose of a matrix and and then we can perform centering and then transpose it back that is what we can do right uh daniel uh, is saying multiply with negative magnitude uh okay you can check this i have not checked this whether the multiplying with the negative attitude results into this or not okay by mistake fine fine so mostly the main idea is you can transpose the matrix and then you can perform the perform the perform uh, the uh, centering and then you can transpose it back so we'll get the centering by rows right that's the main idea is it clear to everyone Okay, is it clear to everyone? Yes. Okay, fine. So this is all about the NumPy arrays that you have. So there are certain other functions also. So I have added an exercise at the end of it, uh, which you have to perform today. Um, there you are asked to create uh, work on some data set also, and you have to work uh, whatever library functions you have studied. You have to perform the implementation, right? That all you have to do. uh before you start with that i'll discuss some other libraries as well and then you can proceed with with the app manual right so another library that i want to discuss about is pandas so pandas is a library that we have in uh, python uh, and here we'll be using mainly for data analysis purpose okay you want to analyze the data that you have so we already discussed in the lecture that your data will be divided into three parts which will be training data testing data and validation data so your validation data what was the purpose of validation data what was the purpose of validation data even yes check it you see it is uh, yes exactly you want to check the performance of the model right you, are, you want to check the performance of the model that's why you, are, you will be using a validation data right is it clear so data needs to be complete yes data needs to be complete you cannot afford a data for example if your data has some missing values right if your data certain rows are there where this whole uh, rows are missing and we just have labels so such type of data we cannot pass into the model model cannot learn these types of data okay we want to make sure that the model learns appropriate data so before uh, proceeding by before passing data to the model you have to view the data properly that is you have to study that what kind of data do we have so for that you have certain uh, you can use pandas library to view the data right so get a view later on in the next lab we'll be studying about pre processing of data what is pre processing of data that is make sure that your data is complete and it does not have any missing values null values present in it okay for example if you have certain missing values in your data you can what you can do you can replace uh, those missing values replace those missing values by mean or median such values you can do such things you can do or if you have an entire row which has null values you can simply drop that row okay which does not have any uh, efficient uh, values present in it okay these are some of the pre processing that is perform which we'll study in the next lab but today you have to what you have to do you have to study your data okay you have to study the data that you that is main point is it clear so 
uh, some of the functions that we have in pandas library is everyone clear with this basic idea yes or no okay Okay, I suppose everyone is clear. Yes, data analysis. Okay, uh, so in Pandas library, we have certain functions. Just a minute, let me. Okay. Okay, in Pandas library, we have certain functions. For example, we have view, uh, sorry, not view. We have dot head. First of all, what we'll be doing, open the file that I, that I have shared. Uh, just a minute, open that file. Uh, open uh, file second. I think file fourth or second, I think. So everyone is aware of Google Colab? Okay. Okay, I still, uh, this is lab for SQLR. See, yes, so somebody has asked uh, EDA. Okay, uh, data analysis. Yes, it is called data analysis. Uh, uh, but I think mostly in this stage, yes, we'll be performing some pre processing steps uh, that we'll be trying to analyze the data. That is the processing we'll be studying later on. First of all, today in today's lab, I just want you to observe the data that you have. That is uh, whatever data you I want you to create. Uh, for, uh, uh, I want you to observe data. I want to do uh, perform a splitting of data. For example, uh, 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 the, you have a certain set of rows and columns. I want uh, for only one certain rows and columns only from the entire data set. That is all operation we'll be performing today. In the next lab, we'll be performing uh, the data analysis. They will be performing the maybe performing the pre processing. Okay. Yes. So yes. Is it clear? Fine. Okay. Is everyone ready with the file? Yes. Is everyone ready with the file? Okay. In the file, first of all, you are loading the CSV file. Okay. Uh, CSV file is a comma separated file. You, I know. I think you are aware of this. Um, uh, this file will contain your data. So when you load the data in the Pandas library, this uh, it will be converted into data frame format. So data frame is actually a tabular form of data which you have in form of rows and columns. But if you want to convert this data into NumPy array, for example, if you if this data is the numerical data and you want to convert into NumPy array format of a particular column or a particular row, you can use two NumPy function to do the same. Okay. Then if you want to see certain rows of the column, for example, starting rows of the column, you can use head function. Uh, for trailing rows of a column, you get so not a column, but entire data set. You can use tail function. Similarly, there is a describe function. Describe function to do statistical information about the data. For example, if you see the output of describe function, um, output of describe function, then it will give you some statistical information. For example, mean, median, mean, count, standard deviation, 
So this is actually a part of data analysis which will study in data mining for the 25th and 70th percentile. We will not be discussing it that right now. Then I have data.info through which you can get the information about your data. What kind of data do you have? Okay, these are float. What is the data type? Uh, does it have null value or not? Okay. Then uh, as I discussed, that will be performing pre-processing in the upcoming labs. So in pre-processing, we need to know is the, is, does the data contain any null values or not. Okay. So is null is a function. Similarly, fill NA is a function through which you can fill the null columns, null values, whatever null values you have. Then after that, will be uh, last thing we will be seeing in the Pandas library is Sorry. The last part of NumPy library is lock and iLock. Okay, so we uh, have in a multi-dimensional array also. Suppose you want to obtain only the rows, only the column second, second column only. What you can do, you can perform the slicing of the array. If I pass zero column and two, what it will do? It will give me all the rows from starting with this from the zeroth index of second column. Okay, so I have asked you a question in the file itself, eighth question, the eighth question is there, where I'm asking you to uh, provide me with each rows of column A. So what will be the output? The the syntax that you'll be passing passing will be zero, comma A, right? So fifth fifth uh, column I'm asking. So fifth you pass. Is it clear? So in pandas also, uh, you can perform the lock uh, slicing of the data frame using lock and i lock. Okay. So lock, uh, there are certain differences between lock and i lock. So lock mainly is contains you can pass label name inside lock. While in i lock, you cannot pass label names. That is the main difference that you have. Okay, uh, I'll give, uh, give this part to you to make certain, to do your own combination and try to identify different combination and try it by yourself uh, to slide the entire data frame. Okay, so in this file, I have uh, performed the experiment on a data set that is Iris, um, sorry, empty cars data set, which is a CSV file. And in the exercise, I have asked you to perform the same operation, perform similar operation on iris.csv dataset that I have uh, so that I have shared with you. Okay, so you have to perform the operation on that. Right? Is it clear to everyone? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So uh, we also have another library called Matplotlib, which also I am giving you as uh, Matplotlib. Matplotlib is a library for visualization of your data. So, for example, you want to uh, in a bar chart or bar chart of your data that you have, you can use Matplotlib library to perform the same. Okay. Uh, that part also you can, you, you can refer by yourself. Uh, there are other uh, plotting things as well, which you can uh, check by yourself, right? Then we have the uh, last part that I want to discuss uh, is cyclic load. Okay, so we discussed about the algorithms, okay? Various algorithms we discussed supervised, unsupervised. Learning, this is learning, unsupervised. Any algorithm name that you can recall in supervised learning or supervised learning? Any algorithm name? Yes, near regression. This one of the supervised learning algorithm, logic regression. Unsupervised learning, any algorithm name? Yes, case cluster is an unsupervised learning algorithm. Okay, so what a uh, psychic learn will help you in implementation of this algorithm. It already has in the library this algorithm. All you need to do is pass your data. Okay, pass your data as well as parameters. Parameters, parameters that I'm meaning is number of box can be a parameter. Number of box means 
what is number of epochs somebody had a question yesterday also that uh, suppose we increase the number of epochs then is it possible that 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 precision will increase so this epochs is actually a parameter that will pass that you want to train the machine train the algorithm with this data for these many number of times for 50 number of times for 100 or 1000 number of times right these all parameters you can pass so psychic learn has uh, the uh, machine learning algorithms present in it we have two functions in psychic learn that is fit and prep these are two main functions so fit is mainly used for uh, fitting your model that is you are passing your data to create a model okay so here you can pass x and y so what will be the x and y x will be your label your data and y will be your labels okay so we have certain attributes also in this which you can refer from the file also. that if we have if you are loading a data you can if you do dot data will give you the data entire data set and dot target will provide you with the labels that are present in the data set similarly feature names and target names will provide you with the name of all the features in the data set and target name will give you the name of the target uh, the label name right is it clear okay so cycle learn also has certain data set available uh, data set are available i have loaded iris data set in this there are other data sets also so you have to perform experiment on any other data set that is present in scikit-learn okay is it clear then we have a function called train test split train test split in this which is used to split your data the training and testing part okay if you pass the test is as 0.4 then it will convert 60 percent of the data to training part and 40 percent testing part okay these all operations you can perform with the help of scikit learn more on this will be performing when we will study after we do linear regression we'll do the implementation of linear regression on this along with this uh, we have the last library that we have is nltk that we'll discuss so everything is clear with scikit learn is everyone here with us cycle learn so shall we proceed with the last one hello hello Shall we proceed with the last one? All right. So in the lectures also we discussed about spam classification. So spam classification. The so spam classification will be more textual data. Okay. It will be performed on textual data. So how will we perform? For example, I'm just giving a brief idea. What you can do is uh, this textual data will have uh, certain words okay certain words in spam and certain words in non-spam and we'll be calculating the frequency of the word and based on that maybe something like that something uh, we'll be calculating the frequency of a thing first what we'll do we'll list out the number of words and we'll calculate the frequency of the words occurring in spam and we'll calculate the frequency of words occurring in non-spam and what we can do based on the unknown data that we have we can identify that which data set has the highest frequency of the occurring this word occurring so we'll find the same okay this is one of the way just i'm giving an idea so what is the process we are actually dealing with textual data so so far we studied that in pre-processing is required in numerical data where we have missing values right missing values wherever we have we are performing pre-processing so in textual data also we need certain pre-processing okay we need to do certain pre-processing to make sure that only uh, proper data is being passed into the model or learn okay so there are certain pre-processing steps in textual data also so in the lab manual i have taken an example of twitter sample 
Twitter sample is a data set that is present in NLDK corpus. You can check for yourself what are the other data sets that are present. So you can use any other textual data that you want okay, to perform the operation. But here we have used Twitter sample to show the same. So what we are doing, we are performing pre-processing steps on this Twitter data. What is the pre-processing step? We are performing localization. We are performing the stop word symbol and stemming. Okay, these are the three main operations that we are performing. Okay, so what is tokenization? Tokenization is converting your words sentences into tokens. For example, you have a sentence called "I am playing." You are converting it into tokens. Okay, three tokens will be created, and these tokens will be created based on the white space that you have. Each tokenization algorithm has its own algorithm. Okay, you have many tokenization algorithms. Similarly, uh, for example, you perform stemming or any other operation. For example, if I take, um, um, I'm just giving you an idea. Okay, uh, so far is this clear? I'm just giving you an idea. Is it clear to you or not? I'm dis I'm going to discuss some other topic right now. So if this is clear, I will proceed with the topic. Uh, this I'll repeat this part. Okay. Okay, tokenization is clear to everyone. Okay. Okay, so first part that we'll be doing is tokenization. So in the NLK library itself, we have many uh, different tokens. Yes. Two tokens of one type. Uh, you mean two tokens of one type by you mean? Uh, what do you mean by one type? Uh, that is one, for example, are you seeing I and I? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, we can have. Yes, we can have. So, say tokenization algorithm, same word maybe. The, I have presented an example. Are you saying the same? Is, am I understanding the same thing? Okay, see uh, what happens in tokenization is it is not trying to understand anything about the words. Okay, it is just creating tokens out of your sentence. So you can have, for example, if you have a certain sentence like lunch, 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 so you, it can create multiple tokens. But if you so see, a uh, different tokenization algorithm will work differently. Uh, see, uh, some, some of the basic tokenization algorithms, some of the basic tokenization algorithm what does it do it just identifies the white space between words and creates the tokens okay it does not understand okay the what are the words present in it but there are other tokenization algorithms also there can be different any a uh, different tokenization algorithm which will try to uh, identify okay this word and this word are similar so maybe we will not uh, Calculate it again. Okay, so there are multiple tokenization algorithms present in LTK. You can catch reference. So the based uh, be, uh, word tokenized word tokenized is, I think, the function that we are using here. So what it will do, it will just identify the white space between the sentence, between the words in a sentence, and it will create a token. Okay, is this clear now? Right. Okay. Uh, all right. So the next part that we'll study is. Uh, stop first removal. Okay, what is the first that we have uh, in NLTK corpus? We already have a, a library full of stop words. Okay, we have stop words present in it, so it has already recorded some of the words are stop words, like for example, I am was is. <coughs> Sorry, uh, these are all stop words. Okay, for example, these will not impact your machine. This will create an impact in your machine uh, live, the, uh, the algorithm that you are creating. For example, in some classification or any other classification based mo model, I is was will not be of much impact. Okay, only the word, for example, in spam classification, I'm just taking an example that lunch is a word is that is possibly a spam word, while mail is a word which is not a which is not a spam word. Okay, these are not stop words. So, I is was or some similar words to this 
will not have much impact in the machine learning model. So these are the stoppers which will remove before passing the data into the model. Okay, clear to everyone? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Now the last part is stemming. Stemming. Stemming is what converting your converting your word into the root word. Okay. Root. Word conversion. For example, playing is a word that you have in the sentence, and you convert it into root word play. Okay, this for ease for uh, for making the classification much more easier. So dealing with playing as in a word playing played and others, you can directly deal with only root word play instead of that. Okay, whenever we want to measure such things, we have to do stemming operations on the. Uh, to, on the center, on the words that we have. Okay, so there are two uh, types. First is stemming. What does stemming do? Stemming directly will remove. Possibly stemming will do is remove the prefix part. Okay, then this lemmatization, which you can also try lemmatizer, various lemmatizers. Here we have loaded only the uh, stemmer, but what you can do, you can also load a stem lemmatizer. You can check that which library contains lemmatizer. And what you can do, you can perform the lemmatization. Lemmatization is also similar to stemming only. It performs the same operation, but it will give better results. Okay. So, for example, instead of playing in a stem, possibly it will give you play i as an output, but lemmatization might give you play as an output. It will give you better result. That is the main idea. So, what you can do, you in this lab manual, what you have to do in this part, you have to work on any other text data set. So you can load any other text data set from NLTK corpus, or you can create your own string of text, and you can perform the same operation on it. Okay. Is it clear? Any one of the option is there for you. And the last is you have to uh, try the lemmatization as well as stemming. And check whether which of the following gives better results, right? Is it clear to everyone? Is stemming part clear? And what you have to do in the lab part? Hello? Okay. Is everyone clear with this? All right. All right. So uh, now, in I think uh, everyone has joined the classroom. So now, what you do? You study the lab files that I have provided you. Uh, you go through it and also perform the lab practice. And also in NLTK, whatever I have uh, shown you, as well as uh, discussed the what lemmatization is coming. I those both of the libraries and try to get the result on any other textual data set or uh, any data set you can create by yourself, any set of um, verse, sentences you can create by yourself and try it on that. And similarly, perform other experiments for scikit-learn, plotlib, as well as pandas and numpy. Okay. Is it clear? So I'll stop sharing now. Okay, uh, yes, submission uh, related detail uh, I wanted to tell you. Uh, so in as a part of submission, um, uh, what you have to do is you have to create the GitHub repository. I hope you are aware of the GitHub repository, everyone. So you have to create your own GitHub repository, the uh, syntax of something like your role number followed by your name. Okay, uh, this should be your convention, uh, naming convention of uh, your GitHub repository, and then uh, you have to upload. You have to keep uploading your uh, assignments in this repository. So by the end of your uh, before your first session, which is on January, which is in January, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. Before your first session, uh, I'll be asking you to share your link of GitHub repository. And you will be given your evaluation for first sessional based on that. 
internal uh, internal evaluation so you have to keep your repository updated okay so what you have to do you have to create a github repository you have to upload all your files uh, of the respective lab create appropriate folders and upload lab a uh, lab files in that uh, particular repository that is what you have to do is it clear is everyone clear with the instruction okay so now i can proceed with the lab work Edwin, and uh, let me know if you have any doubt. Fine. For this, okay. Okay, for this practical, what to submit? Yes, for this. Yes, for this practical, you have to submit uh, this uh, lab. See, in at the end of each lab. Uh, if, just a minute. Let me share the screen again. So, for example. At the end of each file, yes, all the file exercises given at the end of each lab. So at the end of each lab manual, I have given an exercise. Okay. Uh, also in lab two, I have given certain exercise that you have to perform and submit. Okay. Is it clear? Is it now general? Okay. Fine. I'll stop sharing now, and you can proceed with your work. Let me know if you face difficulty. Okay. Yes, it is fine. You can write your code in Python. Uh, you just need to share your Python code file. Okay, you can share .py file. py file or you can start ipn file okay is it clear